Today's story is about vigour. The Bodhisattva learns great courage and strength in this lifetime and shows that he will be able to teach people in his final lifetime as the Buddha. He is reborn as a prince in a royal family in Benares. His parents are delighted and invite wise men to come and examine the small baby and predict his destiny. This was something that was apparently possible in ancient India. The wise men come and they examine the child carefully and say, this boy has a great destiny. He will be a great man. So the parents are delighted at this. And when the child is 16, they send him off to a place called Taxila, which was famous in the ancient world as a center of learning and crafts and martial arts. It was well known all around. And the young boy does so well there that when he leaves, his teacher gives him five weapons. And he says, look after these five weapons because they will come to your aid at times of need. So he starts to walk on his way home and he comes to a forest. The people in the nearby village warn him against going into the forest. They say there's a yakka there Yaka is a kind of supernatural being, often a monster, who can sometimes be quite angry and cruel. If that monster gets you, you won't come back, because people who go into that forest never return. But the Bodhisattva says, I will go in. I trust in myself and in what I've learnt. I will go and I will overcome the monster. So he goes into the forest. And sure enough, he soon meets this great and terrible being. He's as tall as a house. He has tusks like bananas. And his face is large and white, with two bowls set in it, which are like his eyes. He is really very scary indeed. And he's very furry too. When the yakka, and that's what these monsters are called, meets him, he says, Good morning, you are going to be my lunch. And the Bodhisattva says, oh no, I'm not. I'm going to overcome you. And he takes his first weapon, which is a great bow, and he puts arrows of deadliest poison in it. And he notches the bow and he releases an arrow, but it just gets stuck in the monster's fur. So he says, right, I'm going to do it again. And again, the arrow just gets stuck. In the monster's fur. So he tries another arrow and another and then he's left with no arrows at all. Okay so I'll try my second weapon. So he gets his sword which is 33 inches long and very very sharp and he lunges at the yakka but the yakka's fur is so sticky and this is why he is called furry hug or sticky hug that the sword just gets stuck in the fur and doesn't penetrate through to the yakka himself. So then he tries a bill hook, but again, that doesn't work. So he tries his battle hammer, the fourth weapon, and raises it and tries to hit the monster, but again, it gets stuck. So now he has used up four of his weapons. The monster says, you're not going to get any further with me. As you see, your weapons are useless. You're never going to get out of here alive and you are going to be my lunch. So the young prince decides to use his own physical force because he's been trained in martial arts. And he raises his right fist and lunges at the monster. But it gets stuck in the sticky fur. So he raises his left fist and that lands right on the monster, but again, gets stuck. So then he tries his right leg and he kicks as hard as he can, but his leg gets stuck. So then he tries his left leg and again, kicks as hard as he can, but that gets stuck, but he doesn't give up. He's still got his head. So he throws his head at the monster, but that gets stuck too. The yakka says, 
I think you should now admit defeat. You were completely stuck on me. So now I'm going to eat you. But the prince says, Ah, but if you do, I have one last and fifth weapon. This is the Vajra inside my stomach. What's a Vajra? says the Yaka. It's a diamond, he says, and it's so sharp that if you eat me, it will tear your insides to bit. When the Yaka hears this, he's alarmed and drops the Bodhisattva immediately. He thinks, my goodness, I don't want this to happen to me. And this boy anyway is very plucky and brave and has great wisdom. I think that diamond must mean wisdom. And so he lets him go. All right, young man, you've proved yourself. I've seen you are courageous and bold and wise. Now, go home and just leave me to my forest and you will be safe. But the young prince says, no, I'm not going home. The way you are living now will bring great unhappiness for you in the future because you will receive all the bad fruits of what you've done. And you will bring great unhappiness to other people too, because they can't use the forest. And now they're miserable because they want to visit this forest, but they can't because they know you're there. I want to make this forest a safe place for everybody and for you. So from now on, I want you to keep these five precepts which I'm going to give you. The first one is not to harm any living being. The second one is not to take something that's not yours. The third one is not to eat too much and indulge the senses too much. And the fourth one is not to lie. And the fifth one is not to become intoxicated with anything. The monster hears these precepts and thinks, hmm, that's quite a good way to live. All right then, I'll try them. You have been very noble and brave and you should now go home and feel proud of yourself. And I promise you, I will live from this time onwards in friendship with other beings. And I'll try and keep these five precepts of yours. And then maybe other beings will come into the forest too, and they'll be happy. Good, said the Bodhisattva. And after that, the unhappy monster was much, much happier. Because people did come into the forest, and they regarded him kindly. And at last he had friends and companionship. And the prince went back to his kingdom and sure enough, he did become a great king because he kept these five precepts and looked after his subjects well. So this story has been about the great power of vigour. And it's one aspect of the Buddhist path which the Bodhisattva has to find and cultivate for himself. And it's the ability not to give in, even when things look very bad indeed.